An object moving in a straight line has uniform acceleration 1 meter per second squared. Its initial velocity was 2 meters per second. Find its velocity, speed and displacement after 2 seconds. So we will look at a simulation of this motion. The time t is in seconds, but this simulation will be in slow motion. So we set a equal to plus 1 and the initial velocity u equal to plus 2. Directions to the right are positive. So particle will move to the right. So at the moment t is 0. Let's start the simulation. So the particle will move to the right with acceleration 1 meter per second squared. That means its velocity will increase by 1 meter per second each second. So let's see the simulation again with the velocity vector showing. So initially the velocity is 2. Well it's labeled v here. In general it's called v but initially we use the letter u but okay let's start the simulation so the velocity vector is going to increase in magnitude by one meter per second each second now let's see the acceleration vector so I'll start the simulation again the acceleration of the particle is constant like in all these examples so that vector doesn't change in magnitude or direction Finally, let's look at the displacement vector s. So s is given by this formula here for linear motion with constant acceleration. You can see in this example that s is always a positive vector. It's pointing to the right. Okay, so we want the velocity after 2 seconds. So I'll just move this onto 2. Let's set t equal to 2. So to get the velocity, we just plug into this formula, as we've seen before. Uh, u is plus 2, a is plus 1, t is equal to 2, so we get 4 meters per second. Okay, so we use the letter v to denote the velocity vector. Now, we should really put an arrow on this because we are dealing with a vector quantity. But as I've said before, for linear motion, that vector, that arrow is often omitted but we have to be very careful that we are not talking about the speed here. This is the velocity, so you can put in the plus sign to emphasize the direction of our linear motion. So, what notation will we use for the speed? Well, the speed is the magnitude of this quantity. You know, if we use an arrow here, then we could just drop the arrow to talk about the speed, but since we did not use an arrow, if we want to use notation here, we could use vertical lines like this to indicate the magnitude of the velocity. So we want the magnitude of plus 4. Well, the magnitude of plus 4 is just 4. So the speed is 4 meters per second. Speed is always positive. It's the magnitude of a velocity vector. Now let's look at the displacement vector. So let's show that on the simulation. So here the motion is frozen at t equals 2 seconds. So to solve this, we just plug 2 in for t in our formula for the displacement. Okay, u is 2, t is 2, a is 1. If we work all of this out, we get 6 meters. Now, we can see that this velocity is plus, uh, sorry, this displacement vector is plus 6, which tells us that the particle is to the right of its initial position. Okay, so the vector is pointing to the right. Now let's look at deceleration. If an object is decelerating, then either A, its velocity is positive and it is slowing down, so that means that in our case the particle is moving to the right, that's what a positive velocity is, but slowing down, or B, its velocity is negative, which means it's moving to the left, but speeding up. So a decelerating object could actually be speeding up, provided that its velocity is negative. So we will look at an example. An object moves in a straight line with deceleration 1 meter per second squared. Its initial speed is 4 meters per second. Okay, deceleration is the magnitude of an acceleration vector. Specifically, it's the magnitude of a negative acceleration vector. So whether an acceleration vector is positive or negative depends on the convention, whether we take vectors to the right or pos as being positive or not. 
okay so in our situation the deceleration is one meter per second squared so that means that the acceleration is minus one meters per second squared okay so if we want a deceleration we would have to just take the magnitude of that quantity so the deceleration is the magnitude of minus one which is one meter per second squared okay so here's the picture I've set a equal to minus one so that's a vector pointing to the left and uh, the initial speed is four so let's see the simulation so V the velocity will decrease by one meter per second each second so it will decrease to zero that means the particle will stop momentarily and V continues to decrease by one meter per second each second so now V is negative so the particle is moving to the left with increasing speed you can see that the acceleration is a constant minus one meters per second squared um, throughout the motion okay we want to get the velocity speed displacement and distance traveled after nine seconds so let's see that on the simulation so I'll start the simulation again and uh, run it until t equals nine So we will get the velocity when t is 9. Well, we just have to plug into this formula, but this time we plug minus 1 in for a. I'll just freeze it near t equals 9. So here we have it. We see that v is minus 5 meters per second. We could write the velocity after 9 seconds as v of 9. We could write it like this. So this is a velocity vector. So the sign gives us the direction of the vector. Okay, um, now let's get the speed. The speed is just the magnitude of the velocity. The magnitude of minus 5 is 5. Now let's look at the displacement vector. Okay, so I'll show that on the diagram. So here's the displacement vector at t equals 9. We can see that it's negative. We can calculate it from this formula here. You know, you just plug 4 in for u, um, 9 in for t, minus 1 in for a, and you will get minus 4.5 meters. So we could write our displacement vector like this. S for displacement vector. S at time 9 is minus 4.5 meters. Finally, we want the distance traveled after 9 seconds. Now, distance is a positive quantity, so um, let's uh, rewind this simulation again. So let's look at the first leg of the journey. So the first leg of the journey um, happens until the particle stops. So let's find it the distance traveled when the particle stops. Now to do that we set v equal to naught. Okay and we can solve this equation to find the time taken for the particle to stop. So I'll write that out. Okay so to find the time taken for v to become 4 we set v equal to u plus a t. Um, sorry um, not v to become 4 but v to become 0 so u is 4 a is minus 1 and here's the time taken that we're looking for so we set v um, equal to 0 okay and we just solve this then and from this we get t equals 4 4 seconds so that's what we saw in the simulation okay so when v is 0 t is 4 and we can see that the distance traveled is 8 meters. We get that distance from this formula here. So we plug the value of t that we got, namely 4, into this formula. Okay, so we get s at time 4. Plug into that formula to get 8 meters. Alright, so that's the first leg of the journey. Um, 
then of course the particle is going to move to the left so it's restart the simulation So it's going to cover another 8 meters to get back to its starting point. I'll just pause it here. And uh, we want to see how far it's gone after 9 seconds. Well, we know from the previous part that the final displacement is minus 4.5 meters. Okay, so that's when t is equal to 9. So the total distance is just 8 plus 13.5, which is 21.5 meters.